California is currently experiencing a significant drought, and there is uncertainty about when it will come to an end. Interestingly, the state is also grappling with severe flooding. This seemingly contradictory situation is puzzling, and in today's video, we will explore this unusual circumstance and talk about the multi-billion dollar mega dam that California plans to use to combat it. However, before we delve into that, let's start by looking into the state's water situation first. California faces significant challenges when it comes to water. Many parts of the state, such as the Great Basin, Mojave, and Colorado regions are officially designated as deserts. When the first American settlers arrived in this area a few centuries ago, they struggled to cultivate the land due to scarcity of water. Present-day conditions aren't much different. In October 2021, the California governor declared a state-level drought emergency and urged citizens to reduce their water consumption by 15% in hopes of improving the situation. However, in 2023, nearly 18 months later, the emergency declaration is still in effect. The state has been dealing with officially recognized drought conditions for over a thousand consecutive days. However, there's another important aspect to consider. Amidst this prolonged drought, California experienced a period of exceptionally heavy rainfall, resulting in significant flooding in some areas. This led to damage in towns and cities, with 22 fatalities, prompting the governor to declare another state of emergency. Currently, the state is facing simultaneous emergencies of drought and flooding, which might seem contradictory. The key to understanding this contradiction lies in water management. During periods of intense rainfall, a large amount of water pours into the ground, causing flooding. However, only a small fraction of this water is effectively collected and stored. When the weather clears, most of the water drains away or flows into the sea, and the drought persists as if the rain never occurred. It's like filling a bathtub, where the water drains away if the plug isn't in place. This is the predicament that California is grappling with. They can't collect enough water during rainy periods to compensate for the dry spells. As a result, they oscillate between too much water and too little, repeating this cycle again and again. The big question here is whether there's a solution to this issue. California has certainly made efforts to address it. Back in the 1950s, the state faced a situation quite similar to the current one, marked by frequent droughts and floods. Frustrated with this pattern, California established the State Water Project, often referred to as the SWP, with the straightforward objective, find a way to store excess water during periods of heavy rainfall so that it can be reused during droughts. In the initial years, they constructed over 20 dams, enabling them to gather water in vast reservoirs when there's abundant rainfall. Among these, Lake Oroville is probably the most well-known, serving as the reservoir behind the Oroville Dam. This dam happens to be the largest in the entire United States, towering over 200 meters, while the reservoir can hold hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Another well-known example is Pyramid Lake, situated just outside Los Angeles. In times of drought, the water stored in these massive reservoirs can be transported to farms and cities. This is an impressive process that relies on an extensive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water travels hundreds of kilometers, even spanning mountain ranges. The most renowned part of this system is the California Aqueduct, which transports water from Sierra Nevada to Los Angeles, branching off to serve numerous communities along the route. At one point, the Edmonston pumping plant must elevate this water over the Tehachapi Mountains reaching a height of 600 meters, comparable to pumping a river over the top of the One World Trade Center. Remarkably, no other pumping plant anywhere in the world raises water to a greater height than the Edmonston does. Overall, it stands as one of the most sophisticated and ambitious water management systems globally. However, during its construction in the 1960s and 70s, it was originally envisioned as just stage one. In the 1980s and 1990s, there were intentions to construct additional dams and canals, but these projects were postponed for various reasons, primarily economic challenges in California, including mounting debts, playing a significant role, but there were also environmental concerns. 
These water infrastructure developments disrupted the natural flow of rivers, causing difficulties for several local species. The populations of salmon and steelhead trout, which migrate upstream for breeding, suffered significant declines due to the state war project. The presence of numerous dams and pumping stations blocked these fish from reaching their breeding grounds. Consequently, California decided to delay the next phase of construction, canceling Stage 2, and relied on the initial projects to fulfill the task. In the initial years, the newly established facilities did have a positive impact. Approximately two-thirds of the water collected by the system was allocated to urban areas, while the remainder was used for irrigating orchards and farmlands. The entire system was estimated to contribute around $400 billion to the statewide economy annually. However, in recent years, the existing elements of the state water project have encountered challenges. When these components were initially constructed, California's population was under 20 million people. However, over the past few decades, the state's population has doubled and has the water demand placing significant strain on the dams and canals. This is one of the key reasons behind the state's recent struggles with drought. As Mike Wade, the executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition, put it, Our water demands have grown far beyond what the system was originally designed to handle. Over the past century, California's average temperature has increased by nearly 2 degrees Celsius, leading to severe and prolonged heat waves. Droughts are becoming more severe, the population is expanding, and the water management system is urgently in need of an upgrade. This is why the state has decided to construct the site's reservoir. Several kilometers north of Sacramento lies a narrow valley flanked by cliffs and hills. The landscape is arid and covered with dry, scrubby vegetation, including open plains of yellowish grass and scattered clusters of bushes and trees. There are a few scattered buildings, but it's not an officially recognized town. Now, the state has plans to inundate this valley and transform it into a reservoir. On the project's official website, the team describes it as an environmentally beneficial, off-river reservoir designed to capture surplus water from major storms and store it for drier periods. This concept has been under consideration since the 1950s. It was also included in the initial phase of California's water management project, but the state water project ultimately deemed the plans overly ambitious, primarily due to the staggering $4 billion price tag. Consequently, they chose to focus their efforts on other projects, such as the massive Oroville Dam. However, in recent years, they've had a change of heart, recognizing the value of this project. If successfully executed, the site's reservoir may not completely resolve California's droughts, but it will certainly make a significant difference. The reservoir has the potential to store over 2 cubic kilometers of water, sufficient to provide a year's worth of drinking water for hundreds of thousands of California households. So, how will they go about building it? The construction process begins with the installation of several dams, strategically placed to seal off openings between the hills and the valley's periphery. The primary dams in this project will be the Sites Dam and the Golden Gate Dam, both situated on the eastern side of the valley, while the remainder will be located in the northern area. Collectively, these dams will effectively transform the valley into a large, waterproof basin. The next step involves filling this basin. Typically, this is achieved by diverting a river and allowing it to flood the valley. This approach was employed in the construction of the Oroville Dam, where builders blocked the Feather River and patiently waited for the rising waters to inundate the valley behind it. During periods of heavy rainfall, the river continues to supply the reservoir, maintaining its water levels for future use. However, the site's valley lacks substantial rivers. It only has a few shallow creeks. Consequently, the new reservoir will be filled using a somewhat different method. Approximately 25 kilometers to the east of the valley flows the Sacramento River, California's largest river. During the rainy months, the state intends to draw water from the Sacramento River, transport it through fields, hills, and towns via pipelines, and then channel it into the site's valley. Imagine it as a giant faucet filling an enormous container. During dry seasons, the stored water can be released, offering relief to nearby areas. While pumping water from the river to the valley requires a significant amount of energy, the state water project 
considers it as a worthwhile endeavor, particularly because it will recoup some of that energy. When water is discharged from the reservoir, it will pass through a series of hydroelectric generators, supplying roughly 80% of the energy needed for the initial pumping process. Construction is currently scheduled to commence in 2024, with a worst-case scenario of 2025. Completion is expected six years later, around 2030 or 2031. Some individuals are already expressing disappointment that it won't be ready sooner. When California experienced those floods in early 2023, a substantial amount of rainwater rushed down the Sacramento River. If the site's reservoir had been operational, it could have been stored this flood water for future use, enough to provide water for over 200,000 Californian households for an entire year. Jerry Brown, the executive director of the site's project authority, remarked, this is precisely the kind of situation for which sites is being constructed. Brief periods of exceptionally high flows. Without the site's reservoir in place, it represents a missed opportunity, and people are eager not to miss out again. Some individuals believe there are potential drawbacks. To finance the project, the State Water Project, SWP, may need to increase water prices. And there are concerns for some about the possibility of a 300% price hike. Whether this substantial increase will occur remains uncertain, but it is a cause for concern. After all, what's the benefit of providing additional water if it becomes unaffordable for the public? Additionally, environmental groups have raised concerns about the impact of drawing water from the Sacramento River on migrating fish populations. When a dam is employed to block an entire river, as exemplified by the Oroville Dam, it inevitably disrupts the environment because fish are obstructed from swimming upstream by the concrete barrier. However, since the site's project is designed as an off-stream reservoir, it won't obstruct the Sacramento River. The primary disruption will be caused by the high-capacity pumps, but these will be equipped with advanced fish screens to prevent animals from being pulled inside. Furthermore, the SWP has committed to using some of the water stored in the site's reservoir to support local species. Many fish species rely on deep, cold pools for breeding, and during dry seasons, these pools become warm and shallow. The site's reservoir would serve the purpose of replenishing these pools and maintaining the appropriate depths and temperature for breeding, which is a significant aspect of the overall project. While the primary focus is on assisting humans, there is also a goal of aiding other species. There is still some uncertainty about whether this project will ever come to fruition, as the necessary funding hasn't been fully secured. Nevertheless, as things currently stand, it appears that the reservoir will be operational by 2030. What are your thoughts on this development for California? It is a big project after all. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.